Matthew chapter 24, I want to just focus for a minute on verses 3 through 6, and then we're going to sort of skip down. I'm just trying to give you the gist of what Jesus is saying here. They're on the Mount of Olives. He has just told them that he will destroy the temple. The temple would be destroyed and not one stone will be turned upon another. And, and that caused interest in the disciples. They said, Lord, tell us when these things will be. And so Jesus goes on as he's on the Mount of Olives. He's talking to his disciples. Verse 3 says, And he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Underline that. Memorize that. Keep that at the forefront of your mind. Take heed. There's a direct warning. And it's so important for us today as you are studying the end times. There is so many things out there that are false teachings, false doctrines, people trying to make money because everybody wants to know what the future is. Everybody wants to predict what the future is. And in our day's society, if they figure they can make a dime off of it, they're going to make it even more glamorous than it really is. Or like they've got some kind of insight. We'll look at that in just a few minutes. So Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many what shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We heard of wars and rumors of wars lately. See that you be not troubled. Underline that. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Skip on down to verse 21. He goes on to say some of the events that will take place and what they'll do and all the rest. He said for in verse 21, after that he describes some of the things that are coming and the, that will take place that Daniel talked about. He says, for then there should be great tribulation. This is considered the great day of the Lord. In the great tribulation, there will be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor never shall be. And then he goes on to say, except the days be shortened, and there are many who come say, I'm a Christ, and they're a Christ. And I want you to skip on to verse 33 talks about through those verses he talks about things that are happening in the tribulation which we are going to talk about in the next few weeks about the bodies and how long it takes for the the fowls and the buzzards that will come and and all the great death that will happen during the tribulation and then he says in verse 33 so likewise ye when you see all these things know the end is near even at the door And then he goes on and talks about Noah and his day when men weren't expecting it. And I preached from that last week that that it came. Noah didn't even know the time. No one knew the time until God said, get in the ark. And God shut the door. And then it was too late for all who didn't believe. And God destroyed the world. So God is comparing that as to the day of the tribulation where no man knows the time or the place. But the day is coming When the Lord will return, and if you've not accepted him as your personal Savior, the door is shut. Okay? Now, we'll talk about some of the other things. Oh, I heard we can get saved during the tribulation. We'll talk about that, but I wouldn't count on it. Not impossible, but not very very probable. So, anyway, he goes on and describes that, and he talks about how the ones are working in the field, one's taken away. And the woman, two women grinding the meal, one's taken, one's left. And in verse 44, therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Jesus gave these words to the disciples as an encouragement, not a discouragement. We're living in a society or a world today. I mean, how many is worried about North Korea? I mean, watching North Korea, I'm not really worried about him, but it is a concern. There's some problems going on there. And when you have somebody with a mentality of this regime over there, and you put these mass weapons in their hands, <laughs> it is not, does not spell out good. 
You know, that, that is just a recipe for disaster. That's like taking, you know, giving a Mitchell, a three-year-old, a, a bazooka and say, here, go play in the yard. You know, that's not going to be good. So this guy is a concern. And then we have the great eclipse coming. It's going to be all over the, I'm looking forward to it. I remember when I was a kid, I saw an eclipse. But there are people out here that are just going off the deep. Oh, it's the end. The Jesus is coming back August the 21st. The end is near. And see, the heavens and the stars and the moons are assigned to us that Jesus is coming. They are assigned to us. They are assigned that he's coming. If you can say he's coming August 21st, more than likely you're wrong. Because Jesus told us in an hour that you think not. In other words, all the math you can do, all the things that you can figure out, if you think it's coming that time, you're not right. He's going to come, and he says, no man knows the time but the Father. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son. He says, I don't even know. The only one that knows is the Father. They call that the kenosis of Christ, by the way. Didn't even think about the thing. He's God, right? Fully God. He didn't even think about the things that he knew wasn't the Father's will for him to consider. That's, that's pretty in-depth doctrine there. But that thing, it shows that I don't even know. That's the Father's business, not my business. My business was redeeming the world to the Father. The Father's business. It's in His hands. He knows the time. He knows. So why, if we don't know the time, we don't know the place, why should we even study it? I want you to understand, Jesus gave us these signs for a purpose, for a reason, so we would have peace. Not so we would get all bent out of shape. Not so we would be afraid. So we'll look at that. Let's look at the, why should we study the accounts of the end? John says, and John, y'all write these down where you can, back your bulletin, whatever, John 14, 25, these things I have spoken to you, being yet present with Jesus is speaking. He spoke these things unto them while he was here. He's telling them that the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, will come, and verse 26, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. Let's just stop right there for a minute. The Holy Spirit will come. The Comforter will come. He will teach you all things and bring things to your remembrance. If he brought something to your remembrance, that means you have seen it before, right? Or read it before. So let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not going to reveal something that's not in here. Let's get that crystal clear when we're studying the end times or anything in Scripture. If it's not in here, write it off. It's false teaching. Jesus warned us, be careful of false teachers that will come. So he's going to reveal and bring back to your remembrance. Listen to what he says in verse 27 of chapter 14. Peace. I leave you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Don't worry about North Korea. Don't worry about Putin. I'm not worried about the, you know why? Because there's a God that's in control of Putin. There's a God that's in control of Donald Trump and Kim, whatever his name is, and, and China and, and Japan and Turkey and Egypt and Syria and Iran. All those are put there and in place be, by the hand of an almighty God. Okay? So he's saying, I give you this, that you'll have peace, that you would not be afraid. He says in verse 28 of chapter 14 of John, Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and I come again to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I go to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Okay? And now I have told you before it comes to pass. Listen to this. Underline this in your Bible. John 14, 29. Jesus says, I have told you before it comes to pass that when it comes to pass, you might believe. 
So all you out there that want to argue or all those out there that want to say, well, I don't know about the Bible. All that's a bunch of mythology and it's not true and all that. Jesus said it 2,000 years ago. In the coming weeks, we'll look at what Jesus said and Paul said and Daniel and Ezekiel and Zechariah said even way before then about what's happening in our world today and how it's all coming together according to what God said thousands of years ago. And he said, I said this so that you would believe. I said this that you would not be afraid. I said this that you would have peace. So I'm not a, I'm not doomsday preacher. Oh, it's terrible. It's good. No, it's wonderful. I said the other day, all this has come to pass and people are like, oh my goodness. I'm just like, yes. I hate that it's terrible. I hate that this world is getting so evil. It's, it's very disturbing when you look at it just for that. If you're a non-believer and you have no hope and you know not any better, yes, it's terrible. But I got a little insight through his word and his Holy Spirit that says, this is coming to pass just like I said. And I know that the end is coming. You said, well, they said that in World War I, World War II and all. Yes, they did. No, they worried about the end of time. But let me tell you, all the prophecies, which we'll look at in the next few weeks, were not fulfilled in World War I and World War II that God had said about Israel. Israel was not a nation. They did not have their land until 1967. Okay? Those are prophecies that were spoke of in Daniel and Ezekiel that were fulfilled in 1948 and 1967. That was before World War I and World War II. As far as we know, as far as the ones way smarter than me, they said there are no more prophecies in Scripture that need to be re- fulfilled until Christ returns. It's all been done. The best we can understand Scripture, all prophecies are fulfilled. So I told you that when it comes to pass, you would believe. Also in Revelation 22, 7, it says, Behold, I come quickly. This is Jesus talking. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Do you all know that up until I think the late 1800s or something like that, people didn't even study the book of Revelation? It was too far out there. Maybe even early 1900s. Man, it was just, you're talking about dragons and locusts and all these weird things. I mean, I, when nobody understands that. And then they began to study it. Jesus said, if you study this and know this, try to understand it, the Holy Spirit will reveal it and teach it to you, and you will be blessed. You will have peace. You won't be afraid. So I'm getting to the why should we study? The Bible tells us that we would be blessed. The Bible tells us that we wouldn't be afraid, that we would have peace, that we shouldn't let our hearts be troubled. Matthew 16, when Jesus came, he's talking to the Pharisees and to the Sadducees, and they came to tempt him and said unto him that he should show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said unto them in verse 2, When it was evening, you say... It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. Y'all just thought that's something a sailor made up, isn't it? Evening red, morning gray, sends a traveler on his way. We just thought that old... Jesus said that that's the time of the, the star, the, the heavens will show the weather. And boy, they knew that. They studied that. They were had farmers and all the rest. They knew these things about how to read the weather and all the rest. He said, you can see that. He said, in the morning... It will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. Usually a red sky in the morning, more likely you're going to have rainy weather that day. Jesus said this. Isn't that interesting? And then he goes on to say in verse 3, he says, O oh, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? What he was talking about, the sign of his coming the first coming where he came to redeem the world. And they rejected him as the son of God come to redeem the world. He said, if you had read the scriptures, 
If you'd halfway studied the scriptures, it all points to me. The sacrifices in the temple, everything about the Old Testament points to me to come to die on the cross for the sins of the world the first time. He said, you haven't even studied, you, you study the heavens more than you study my word. And if you'd have studied the, my word, you would know the signs that would foretell of my coming. He chastised the religious leaders of that time for not knowing the signs. I believe if he was here today, he may do the same to us. I've given you everything. I've given you all you need to know to have peace and to not be afraid and to believe in me by the time the signs that are coming. So let's study this. Let's don't let the Lord stand before us and say, if you'd have studied my word, you would have known. Mark thirteen thirty three. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to, to, to seduce. And if it were possible, the very elect. He's talking about Christians. He said there will be false teachers that will come to make money, to make a name for themselves, to look like they know something and they'll have false doctrine and false teaching. And he said, even the very elect, if it were possible, would be deceived. I think we're already seeing that. I think we see people sitting in church right now that are following and looking at these other peoples that are out to make a dollar, to make a name for themselves, that come up and dream up all these elaborate stories about the end time to feed their pocket or their ego, and Christians are following them. But I believe that God's Holy Spirit will convict and He'll show the truth in time. He'll show them what the truth is if they'll just study His Word. That's why he's saying, if it were possible. So he says, the warning of false teachers, he said in Matthew 24, there's no secrets in Scripture. If I ever stand up and say here, well, I was reading the other night, and I was really just studying it, and it was just me and the Lord, and you hear this all the time. And we have that, and that's great. And I ate a cheeseburger, and the Lord showed me a vision out of his word. Oh. Turn the TV off. Go, get a new tab. Turn that, whoever that is saying that, turn it off. If he come up with there's some great secret in God's word that only God has revealed to him, shut him off. Shut it off. I'm warning you, shut it off. Why do you warn me so strong about that? Second Peter 1.20. Know this verse. No prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Plain and simple. A man that will stand up and tell you, I've got the insight to God's word. God revealed it to me after I ate a cheeseburger in a vision. I get all kinds of dreams when I eat spaghetti before I go to bed. But I'm not going to stand up here and tell you God gave me these answers. Each one of you, and I've taught you this before, each one of you has the Holy Spirit within you if you're a born again Christian. And that Holy Spirit will, just like he teaches me, teaches you. You're just as capable of learning this as I am. Now maybe I have a little easier time because I've had a little bit of education. Not much, but some. Maybe I've studied a little bit, so I've got a bigger picture maybe than you do. But it doesn't mean that I'm any smarter or have any more privileges to God's word than you do. You got it? And anybody who would stand up and say that is a false teacher. That's no, I can't put it any plainer. The Amplified Bible, and I know some of you doesn't, don't like other translations, but it helps us to get a better grasp sometimes. This is what it says about 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. He says, but understand this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of or comes from one's own personal or special interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by the act of human will. Now listen, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoken from God. 
I've told y'all over and over and over, God wants you to know his word more than you want to know it. And he's given us the Holy Spirit to reveal it, to teach it, and to bring it to our remembrance. We don't have to go through a high priest. We don't have to go through some man that thinks he's got the answer. I have all I need right here and within me to sh reveal to me what God wants me to know. I know I'm taking time, but I think this is very important as we begin. And this is just an introduction to the next few weeks. But it's so important these days and time. There are so many out there that are trying to get some money in their pocket or make a name for themselves because they know the events of the end time. It's all right here. All right, let's move on. Be careful of those who say God has revealed something to me, so I'll tell you. I know that we, you say, well, you're a preacher and you're supposed to stand up there and tell us what God's word says. Right. I'm supposed to help you to understand if you don't get a grasp of it, but there's nothing new in here. I'm not going to tell you something new contrary to this. God's not going to reveal, as I said, anything to me that he doesn't reveal to you. Be care of those who want to, to say God revealed something in a vision and a dream. Be careful. You saw what Brother Ken in the end time say, the Bible says in the end time, the old men will prophesy and the young men will have visions and dreams. It certainly does. The old men will prophesy. What does that mean? That we're going to have a brand new revelation of God and what's going on? Absolutely not. The word prophesy means to stand up in front of and proclaim truth. I'm prophesying today. I'm standing in front of a group of people and I'm proclaiming the truth of God's word. According to the Greek word of prophesy, I am prophesying this morning. I'm telling you the truth of God's word. So the old men who have studied, who know, who are more mature in the scriptures will stand up and warn people the end is coming. The young men who don't know or maybe not as learned or whatever, and it's not a, a discredit to them, but it's they're younger men. They don't know it. They didn't study. They're younger in spiritual things, I believe is what that's saying. They'll have dreams and visions about what God's word says. Not about something that, oh, I went to bed the other night and I saw this great tower come up out of the waters. And God spoke to me, hogwash. If it's not in God's word, turn it off. If it's contrary or brings up anything new about what God's word, God warns us in Revelation, if you add to or take away from the words of this prophecy, let him be accursed. Let him be damned is what he says. That's pretty harsh, isn't it? Ooh, that's pretty tough. I don't want to add to it or take away. And lastly... On false teachers and why we should study God's word, be careful of those that come up with times and dates. It's not going to happen. March 21st, we're having a big eclipse. I tell you what, I've got plans for March 21st, and I'm not going to be sitting in my fallout shelter at home with my hands over my head. That's not the end. I don't believe it's the It could be. We may not get out of this service today. God, Jesus can come back anytime he wants to. I'm not worried about it. Come on, Lord Jesus. But those who would set a time and a day, Mark 13, 32 says, but of that day, Jesus is speaking again, and of that hour, no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Nobody knows the time. He says later in other scripture, in an hour that you think not. The Son of Man cometh. Now that tells me when I've done all the math, I've figured out all the prophecies are fulfilled, and it looks like Iran and Russia and Egypt and Persia and Libya and Syria and all of them are collaborating on Israel. And it's coming. It's coming. And they're talking about going to war and declaring war on June 16th of 20 whatever. That's the day. No, it's not. Because if you can figure it out, God says it's not going to happen. I think it's going to be a time when we are like, Lord, when are you coming? 
We've done all the math. We know all the prophecy. We've seen all the signs, but Lord, you haven't come. I think we'll be looking for his return with anticipation as the day draws near. So in an hour that you think not, the Son of Man comes. So what is he talking about? The next major event, as I have said, now that I've got to all be careful of the false teaching and how to identify them and all the rest out of the way and the times are coming, and it should be a joyful time for Christians. It, be, it should be a time to let not your heart be troubled. All the prophecies they say are fulfilled. Nothing has to happen. The next major event is called the rapture of the church. According to what Bible teaches and the best that they understand, I understand the next major event is the rapture of the church. Well, rapture, that's an interesting word. And that's great. And some will say, well, that's cool, Brother Kenny. But the word rapture is not even in the Bible. So where do you come up with that? Well, I'll show you where we come up with that. Or where they come up with it. People smarter than me. The Greek word for rapture in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, it says caught up. The Greek word there is harpazo. Harpazo. And it means to snatch or to take away. Well, when they translated from the Greek to the Latin, which means the same word, the word means the same thing, but that word is reparo. And translate Latin to English, that's rapture. So the caught up in 1 Thessalonians 4.17 is reparo in Latin by which the English get the word rapture. So it doesn't say rapture specifically. It actually says uh, harparese or har- whatever. I'm not even good with that. Harparazo. Harparazo. That's the Greek. That's what it was written. That's what Paul, that's the word he wrote. And that means to be snatched up or called out. Is that clear to everybody? Anybody ever said, well, rapture's not even in church. Now you can tell them. Yeah, that comes from the Latin, repere. There's where we get the word rapture. Well, what is the rapture? The rapture of the church. That is when the bride of Christ is called out. I will give you reasons next week why I believe I am a pre-tribulationalist. That means I believe the church will be called to meet the Lord in the air before the, rap, before the tribulation starts. Now, there are those who believe in partial rapture theory. We'll discuss that next week. That only a few of the elect will go first. There are some who believe that there's a mid-tribulation rapture where three and a half years through the tribulation, then will be the rapture of the church. And God will call his saints out. And then there are those who believe they're post-tribulation people that believe that at the end of the tribulation will be the rapture of the saints out of of the world to be with Christ forever. I am a a pre-tribulation and I'll show it to you and that's next week. But this has been sort of a teaching thing. Well, that's great, Brother Kenny. That's all wonderful. And next week we'll discuss those things and I'll give you scripture for each uh, theory. I'll give you scripture for why I believe we are pre-tribulationalists, rapture theory. We'll go through the rapture and what that next event will when Christ calls his bride out. Then the Antichrist is revealed Then the tribulation, seven years, or the 70th week of Daniel, will begin. Okay? As I told you all before, the church age right now is a commercial break for Israel. God dealt with Israel all through the Old Testament. They rejected Christ. Then he began to deal with the Gentiles or the church, the bride of Christ. They'll be taken out of the way. And then he goes back dealing with Israel. And that's another big problem when people are looking at end time studies. That in Matthew 24 that I read you, Jesus is talking to the nation of Israel, not to the church as a whole. Now, the encouraging and all that, that's to all of us. But as far as the events that take place, he's telling the nation of Israel what's going on. We need to be able to identify that, and I hope to do that in the next few weeks for you. 
So you can understand, is he talking to Israel? Is he talking to me? Is he talking, are we in heaven or are we on earth? Because in Revelation it jumps from heaven to earth, heaven to earth, in the scenes all through it. This is so, why do I want to do this? Well, because you see it, all the signs are everywhere. Everybody's panicking. Oh, Robin's got a lady at work that just don't know what to do with herself because the eclipse is coming. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some of my welding hood and look at it. This is going to be awesome. But there is a reason for those signs. He said the sun and the moon and the stars are for several reasons to give light, to show God's glory, and to reveal signs. So I believe the, there is a sign. There is warnings in the heavens that God will put. I believe that eclipse may be a warning to America. Hey, you better repent. You better get right. I believe it could be a warning. Do I believe it's the, the eclipse is going to come as soon as it gets to South Carolina? Jesus will come back? No, I don't. He could. He might come before the eclipse comes. What are you going to do then? Okay? No man knows the hour. It is so important that you are ready and the door is not shut. I want each and every one of you to know without a shadow of a doubt today that I am saved, that I have trusted Jesus as my personal Savior, and no matter what comes, no matter what comes, I'll be safely in his arms. That's what I want. I want you to have that peace. That's what I'm, my primary purpose for this. Because we're not going to be here during the tribulation. I'm not going to experience all these, but I want you to be able to identify as these events unfold. You say, ooh, he's near. I need to tell my family. I need to tell my friends. God's fixing to shut the door. And then it'll be too late. 